Let's dissect this paper on NVLM, a family of open-source, multimodal large language models. The authors claim state-of-the-art results, rivaling even closed-source models. What are the key architectural innovations they've introduced? The core innovation lies in their comparison and hybrid approach to multimodal LLM architectures. They meticulously compare decoder-only models, like LLLL, with cross-attention-based models like Flamingo, highlighting the strengths and weaknesses of each. Their NVLMH is a hybrid, combining the unified reasoning of the decoder-only approach with the computational efficiency of cross-attention for high-resolution images. Interesting. The efficiency aspect is crucial, especially with high-resolution images. How did they address the computational challenges of handling high-resolution inputs? They introduced a 1D tile tagging design for tile-based dynamic high-resolution images. Instead of simply concatenating image tiles, they add a text-based tag before each tile's image tokens. This helps the model understand the spatial arrangement of the tiles, significantly boosting performance on OCR and reasoning tasks. Ablation studies showed the 1D tag outperformed other tagging methods. So it's not just about the architecture, but also about how the data is handled. What about their training data? What made their approach unique? They emphasize data quality and diversity over sheer scale, even during pre-training. Their meticulously curated data sets cover a wide range of tasks, including captioning, VQA, chart and document understanding, math reasoning, and OCR. They found that this diverse, high-quality data was more effective than larger, noisier datasets. That's a counterintuitive finding given the current trend towards ever-larger datasets. How did this data curation impact the model's performance? The high-quality, diverse data led to state-of-the-art results across various benchmarks. Importantly, they also integrated a high-quality, text-only dataset into their multimodal fine-tuning. This prevented the common issue of text-only performance degradation seen in other open-source multimodal LLMs. That's a significant achievement. Can you elaborate on the production-grade multimodality they mentioned? It refers to the model's ability to excel in both vision language and text-only tasks. Most open-source models struggle to maintain text-only performance after multimodal training. NVLM achieves this by carefully curating their data and using a hybrid architecture. In fact, they even saw improvements in text-only math and coding after multimodal training. So the key takeaway is that data quality and a well-designed architecture are more important than just scale? Precisely. Their results demonstrate that a carefully curated, diverse data set combined with a well-thought-out architecture, like their hybrid approach, can lead to significant improvements in both multimodal and text-only performance. The 1D tile tagging is also a significant contribution for handling high-resolution images efficiently. The authors also compare their different architectures, decoder-only, cross-attention, and hybrid. What were the key differences in performance and efficiency? NVLMX cross-attention showed superior computational efficiency for high-resolution images, while NVLND, decoder-only, excelled in OCR tasks and offered unified multimodal reasoning. NVLMH, the hybrid, aimed to balance both, achieving strong performance across the board. Table 3 in the paper shows a direct comparison of training throughput. And what about the impact of freezing the LLM during training? Some models freeze the LLM to maintain text-only performance. Freezing the LLM is a common strategy, used by Llama 3V, for example, to avoid performance degradation in text-only tasks. However, NVLM's results show that unfreezing the LLM during multimodal fine-tuning, combined with their high-quality text-only data, leads to even better text-only performance, without sacrificing vision language capabilities. Table 9 provides a direct comparison. So they essentially found a way to get the best of both worlds, strong multimodal performance, and maintained or even improved text-only performance. Exactly. Their approach challenges the conventional wisdom that freezing the LLM is necessary to preserve text-only capabilities. What were some of the specific benchmarks they used to evaluate their models? They used a comprehensive set of benchmarks, including MMMU, multimodal reasoning, MathVista, math and visual context, VQAV2, natural image understanding, AI2D, diagram understanding, text, VQA, scene text, chart QA, 
DocBQA, RealWorld QA, and OCR Bench. For text only, they used MMLU, GSM8K, Math, and Human Evil. And how did NVLM perform compared to other leading models, both open source and proprietary? NVLM 1.072B models consistently rivaled and in some cases surpassed leading proprietary models like GPT-40 and open source models like Intern VL2 and Llama 3V, though the latter's weights weren't publicly available at the time of the paper. Table 7 provides a detailed comparison. The paper mentions several datasets used in both pre-training and fine-tuning. What were some of the key datasets and why were they chosen? The pre-training datasets included COCO, CC3M, SBU, LAIONN115M, sanitized, VQAV2, Visual Genome, and others focusing on VQA, chart understanding, document understanding, OCR, and math reasoning. The SFT datasets were even more diverse, encompassing a wide range of vision language tasks and a significant amount of high-quality text-only data. Tables 4 and 6 list the datasets. This has been a fascinating discussion on the NVLM paper. The emphasis on data quality and the innovative hybrid architecture are significant contributions to the field of multimodal LLMs. Thank you.